Hello everybody, it's uh, Reggie here again at uh, Brayworth Park. Um, first thing, um, a big thank you to everybody who uh, sent some kind comments and watched and uh, subscribed on my 100 subscriber um, video. Um, I was quite amazed at the, uh, at the response. I think I had uh, 500 views in, uh, in a week, which uh, is a, a, a lot for my channel, which uh, normally gets 30 or 40. Um, and lots of uh, uh, kind comments, uh, very encouraging. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed, who watches, um, likes, comments, whatever. It's uh, it's nice to know that um, uh, people are enjoying and watching uh, the videos that uh, I'm making. Um, so as I mentioned in the last video, um, this time I'm going to be looking at installing this which is the uh, Pico Double Slip. It's the Insulfrog Frog Code 100. Um, I'm going to put it, um, I'll show you where I'm going to put it over on the layout uh, in a minute. Um, but the first thing we also have to do is get it ready for uh, installation, uh, do some wiring to it. So we'll get it down on the workbench and we'll um, get, it, get it ready to put in. So, okay. I'll see you in a minute when we'll look at the uh, where it's going on the track. Bye for now. Okay, so this is the area of the track where I'm going to be fitting the uh, double slip. Um, originally, I fitted uh, point motors going from uh, across all the tracks. Uh, made a bit of a schoolboy error though on the position of this point because if we look under the baseboard it is right in the middle of those two buttons so although a seat motor just got in there it didn't really work um, so what I'm going to do is be replacing these switches here turnouts here and we're going to be putting that this in here that switch will remain so you'll be able to still come down from the third line into the second line and then use the double slip and vice versa. So like I say the first thing we've got to do is get it ready for installation and then we've got to remove this track here in order to fit the, uh, the double slip. Uh, so we're at the workbench now with the double slip and I've read the instructions that come with the double slip from Pico. Um, I've also watched a couple of videos on um, YouTube to uh, try and make it a bit clearer. So what I think uh, you've got to do, the first thing we've got to do is put some dropper wires onto these two points here, positive and negative, because the slip will be uh, insulated from the rest of the track. There'll be insulated rail joints at all four uh, parts of the slip. Then the other thing we've got to do is, I don't know if you can see this, take these wires out here that are um, connected to the to the frog, to this, and we've got to connect a wire to that which will go into the point motor frog switching terminal. So it will turn it into basically and a, a, an electrofrog uh, frog, um, rather than insulfrog. frog. Um, and another thing that uh, is worth thinking about if you're doing these slips is is how you uh, look at them. So you have to look at it that these tracks here are not controlled by this point motor switch, here, switch but actually by this one. It's sort of opposite or reversed if if you like if you just um, can can bear that in mind that these tracks are controlled by this or control this slip and these tracks control this slip so again when i'm wiring up the frog wire to the point motor the point motor connected to this this switch here switch blade here Will actually be the wires that are coming through the board here and vice versa the point motor connected to this switch point 
will be connected to those wires. That's how I read it. Um, let's see if uh, it's right when we install it on the track. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll solder the dropper wires on, try and get these wires out because um, they are a little bit difficult to get out um, and, and put a wire on there. There are uh, quite a few good videos on um, YouTube, Cottesmore, Moore, uh, Mega Point Controllers have done some good videos explaining how these work so um, have a look at those as well and uh, Charlie at Chadwick of course. Right. I'll stop there and uh, come back to you when I've done the soldering. Uh, so I've done the wiring and that uh, wasn't easy. Um, the two dropper wires are, are okay. But when you were go to do these wires where you have to take this, this small wire out, um, the wire just broke, um, made a real mess on the soldering on the plastic here. So uh, what I decided to do was to cut the plastic away underneath the frog um, and just bridge it, bridge the two uh, frog rails with uh, with a wire, um, and and that should do the same job. So it should be fine. Well, that's what I'm hoping. Um, but we'll find out when I put it on the layout and um, and we test it. So we'll take it upstairs and uh, see if it works. Uh, back in the loft, so now I think the position of the um, of the slip is going to be here. So this track will need a bit of alteration here for this, because this line has got to come into into this switch point here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is take this uh, track up. Going to remove the seat point motors, which I'll do. Start to remove the track and uh, lay it out with the slip in place. Uh, back in the loft, so now I think the position of the um, of the slip is going to be here. So this track will need a bit of alteration here for this. Because this line has got to come into, into this switch point here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is take this uh, track up. I'm going to remove the seat point motors, which I'll do. Start to remove the track and uh, lay it out with the slip in place. Okay, the uh, new track is now in with the double slip. Um, the dropper wires have been fitted and connected as well. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't put the point motors on yet for the slip, which I will do after I've done some testing. The first thing I think is to just see how locomotives and stock go over the slip. Okay, so that went through pretty easily, but it is a, a DMU, so I would expect it to and run it back the other way. Yeah, went okay that way as well. So uh, now we'll try and switch lines. I uh, don't know whether I've got this right or not. Seem to work okay too. Excellent. Um, something I have spotted on this switch is that it's not sitting completely flat. It seems to be bowing a bit in the uh, in the middle. So there's there's something not right with my my track laying. So um, I think I'm going to have to just quickly take the track up again um, and try and get it laying 
better and then uh, refit it. I think this needs to be fitted as uh, as good as I possibly can. So, like I say, there's a there's a bit of a bow in it, which I don't know if the camera's picking up on, but um, it's it's not right. So I'm going to get the uh, pieces of track up and refit. So it was debris under the uh, cork from when I drilled the holes for the point motors that was causing the the cork to to be uneven. Uh, my All my layout is all the baseboards are covered with um, four millimeter cork and then the running track also has another, I think it's uh, two or three millimeter track line of cork. I did this just to try and reduce noise. Um, it works okay, but um, probably a, shouldn't have bothered but uh, anyway so all this debris here was underneath the cork causing it to to bow up and that's why the switch wasn't sitting properly so I'll clear all that out glue that back in and then refit the switch hopefully it'll be better uh, I've relayed the double slip uh, put some new cork down and uh, it's a lot better now it's 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 not uh, flexing and uh, all the track Okay, so we've got the Hattons Class 66 pulling the rate to uh, rate of the freight line wagon, I don't know wrong, but uh, just to prove it out. And that seems to go well. Um, so good. The next thing is, uh, like I said, getting point motors fitted. Okay, so um, what's been a couple of seconds for you has been about three or four days for me. I've had quite a bit of problems um, getting this set up. Um, the hole for one of the um, point motors was in the wrong place, so I had to open that out a bit. Um, so I've had this point out and back in about four times. Um, but it's working. I've fitted the cobalt point motors and um, wired the frogs up. So what you have to remember is that um, the, the frog power is opposite. So this point motor goes to the frog power on the right hand side and this right hand point motor goes to the frog power on the left hand side. If you do that you'll be alright. If you do it the other way you'll just keep it in shorts. So now I'll go over to the ECOS because uh, I had quite a lot of trouble setting it up on the ECOS. If anyone's got an ECOS they'll know that the manual is not very good. Um, so I had to do quite a bit of searching on forums but I'll go over there now and show you how uh, this this four-way, uh, this double slip works. Uh, right, so this is the uh, ECOS DCC command station. Um, if, if some of you have got this then you'll be familiar with uh, how it works. It is a good unit um, uh, and it's got a lot of functions but um, if we go to the, this is the main screen, but if we go to the accessories button which is here. So this shows all the accessories that are on the layout and you can scroll through different ones. So the ones I was interested in was the double slip and the mistake I made was I was trying to set up the uh, double slip point motors with this one accessory and I just couldn't get it to work. Um, so I did a bit of research online, I went onto the um, ESU forum and there was a post there that someone else was having the same problem and um, I found out that what you have to do is set up two points and they have to be both the same hand so even though that says left hand and right hand they're actually both the same if you look and also their address numbers have to be consecutive so the mate the first one is 501 the second one is 502 then when you create that you also create the double slip uh, icon and you name that 501 the same as the first one um, then you um, program each individual point motor 501 and 502 and as you can see as I'm pressing that that's changing the double slip arrangement as well 
So once you've got those programmed and connected, you can use the double slip. And if you open the double slip, it gives you the options of which way you want the um, the, the track to go. So um, if I press that one, you'll hear the motors going probably in the background. Or if I press that one, that one, etc. So once you get it mastered, it really is a, a, a really good system and quite simple to uh, operate. So finally, uh, after a few days and a bit of head scratching, finally got the uh, the double slip working and I'll finish off with a few um, running shots of, uh, of locos going through. Um, getting back to the ECOS, if you know anybody would be interested in seeing a a, a couple of videos about it, how it works. If you're thinking about a DCC system or upgrading, uh, let me know. I could um, just go through a few of the uh, points on the ECOS. Um, I think it's a good system. Um, I know it costs a lot, but if you're going to have it for a few years, then maybe it's uh, a good investment. So, okay, and I'll go back to the running shots thanks for watching uh, if you stuck with it this long thanks very much uh, thank you to all the new subscribers and um, I'll see you again soon